Welcome back to Medinair. In this video, let's continue to discuss about case history in orthodontics. In the previous three parts, we have discussed about the reason behind asking the personal identification data to the patient and the purpose of asking the history and general examination of a patient. In this video, let's look at the functional examination. It is well known that normal function and growth of stomatonathic system promotes the normal growth and development of orofacial complex. So if there is any improper functioning in the system, it can result in various malocclusions. So how do we assess them? It includes assessment of respiration, assessment of speech, swallowing, examination of TMJ and assessment of path of closure and postural rest position. So let's see each of them in detail. Now let's see how do we assess respiration in a patient. Humans may exhibit three types of breathing which is nasal which is through nose, oral which is through mouth and oronasal which is combined. This is again an important viva question so do note it. The simple tests which are used for assessing the respiration of a patient are mirror test, cotton test, water test and observation. So let's see what is mirror test. We'll use a double sided mirror which should be held between the nose and mouth of a patient. If fogging occurs on the nasal side of the mirror, it indicates nasal breathing. But if fogging occurs towards the oral side, it indicates oral breathing. The next test is cotton test, where a butterfly shaped piece of cotton is placed over the upper lip below the nostrils. If the cotton flutters down, it indicates nasal breathing. If not, it represents oral breathing. This test can also be used to determine unilateral nasal blockage. Moving on to the next test which is water test. Here the patient is asked to fill his mouth with water and retain it for 30 seconds minimum. If they are nasal breathers, they could accomplish this task with ease. But if they are oral breathers, they could not perform this task. They find it very difficult. At last, we can observe the patient in general and can tell whether they are nasal breathers or oral breathers. In nasal breathers, the external nares dilate during inspiration. In mouth breathers, there is either no change in external nares or they may constrict during inspiration. And this is how respiration is assessed. Now let's move on to assessment of speech. Speech is a learned behavior and lips, tongue, velopharyngeal structures are known to modify the breath stream to produce different variations in speech. Certain malocclusions may cause defects in speech due to interference with the movement of tongue and lips. So how do we observe the defect in speech? It should be observed by conversing with the patient. We should ask the patient to read out a book loud or to count from 1 to 20. The patient with tongue thrust habit tend to lisp and the patient with cleft palate may have a nasal tone. Certain malocclusion or certain conditions can have a variation in different sounds. In cleft lip patient, they may have a variation in P and B sounds that is bilabial type of speech. In cleft palate, the patient may, may encounter glottis, linguovelar, linguovelar pharyngeal type of speech where they have difficulty in H. K and NG and K respectively. If the patient have cleft palate or irregular incisors, the sounds are T, D and S and the type of speech is lingoalveolar. If the patient has missing incisors and anterior open bite, they may have a lingopalatal or lingodental type of speech where the variation occurs in CH, SH or THE kind of sounds. If the condition is class 3 malocclusion, the type of speech they have is lingodental and the sounds are F and V. And that's how we assess speech. Let's move on to assessment of swallowing. Swallowing or deglutition is one of the important functions carried out by stomatonathic system. So alteration in swallowing pattern can also lead to malocclusion. There are generally two types of swallow, which is infantile and adult swallow. The newborn child has the ability to feed itself from the lactating mother, which is called as sucking. It is an automatic reflex in human beings. But with the change in food item from liquid to semi-solid to solid and the eruption of teeth, there is a change in swallowing pattern also, which is adult swallow. Also, this question easily froze from external mouth, which is the difference between infantile swallow and adult swallow. 
we characterize infantile swallow with these things tongue is placed between the gum pads in child also the tongue is placed in close opposition with the lips and we can also find contraction of facial muscles and tongue while swallowing but in adult swallow this is different teeth are erupted so while swallowing the teeth will be together and the tip of the tongue is placed against the palate above the incisors and mandible is stabilized by muscles of mastication and not by facial muscles and there is only a minimum contraction of lips so with these things we can able to differentiate between infantile swallow and adult swallow but there are cases where the infantile swallow gets retained it is called retained infantile swallow it results from alteration of buccinator mechanism then how do we find that the infantile swallow is retained the patient tends to thrust their tongue and the contraction of perioral muscles is also noted while swallowing there will be no contact between the molar tooth during swallowing okay now let's examine the tmj which is the temporomandibular joint the common problems which are observed in tmj are clicking sound crepitus pain of masticatory muscles limitation of jaw movements hypermobility or morphological abnormalities and we all know there are two classic methods to palpate tmj one is pretragus palpation and another one is intraauricular palpation pretragus palpation is done by asking the patient to open and close the mouth slowly while the examiner will bilaterally palpate the pretragus depression with index finger the next one is intraauricular palpation it can be performed by inserting the small finger into the ear canal and pressing anteriorly and also asking the patient to open and close the mouth while doing so by doing these types of palpation we can able to observe all these problems the clicking sound that we hear in the tmj can be of four different types which are initial click intermediate click terminal click or reciprocal click initial click refers to a sign of retruded condyle in relation to the disc intermediate click denotes the unevenness of the condylar surface terminal click refers the condyle is moving too far forward in relation to the disc on maximum mouth opening and reciprocal click refers to in coordination between displacement of disc and condyle so how any problem in tmj can cause malocclusion so it's very simple any ankylosis in earlier stage of life can interfere with jaw growth and alignment of teeth and if there is any trauma or arthritis to tmj or fracture of condyle occurs it influences the growth of mandible and rarely unilaterally excessive growth of mandible can occur in metabolically normal individuals and the mandible shifts to the normal side as a result of it this condition is called as hemi mandibular hypertrophy then moving on to the assessment of path of closure path of closure refers to the movement of mandible from rest position to habitual occlusion abnormalities in path of closure are seen in some forms of malocclusion so which is a normal path of closure upward and forward movement is the normal path of closure if it is upward and backward it is seen in class 2 division upward forward and forward is seen in pseudo class 3 and anterior cross bite upward and lateral with midline shift in occlusion only it is seen in posterior cross bite and constricted maxilla upward and lateral with midline shift in occlusion also in rest position is seen in latronathia then we need to assess postural rest position So what is posterior rest position it is the position of the mandible at which the muscles that close and open the mandible are in state of minimum contraction in order to maintain the posture of the mandible simple right at the posterior rest position a space exists between upper and lower jaws this space is called as interocclusal clearance or the freeway space normal value of this freeway space is 3 mm in the canine region how do we assess the posterior rest position during examination of this the patient should be seated upright with back unsupported and asked to look straight ahead posterior rest position can be recorded in the following three methods which are phonetic method command method and non command method In phonetic method the patient is asked to repeat some consonants like m 
C or repeat a word like Mississippi. The mandible then returns to a postural rest position after one or two seconds of this exercise. The patient is now told not to change the jaw, lip or tongue position and then the dentist would part the lips apart to study the interocclusal space. The next method is command method where the patient is given some commands so as to perform some functions like swallowing. Then the mandible tends to return to rest position after this act. Then the mandible tends to return to the rest position following this act. The third method is non-command method where we won't give any command. The patient is not aware that he is being examined. This is usually carried out by talking to the patient about topics such which is unrelated while carefully observing him or her. And now we are performing some methods to assess postural rest position. How do we record the values? There are three procedures which are direct intraoral procedure where we use vernier calipers in the patient's mouth in the canine region or in the premolar region. There is also another procedure which is direct extraoral procedure. Here we will make two marks on the face of the patient. One mark will be on the nose and another one will be on the chin in the mid sagittal plane. Distance between these two points is measured after in instructing the patient to remain at rest position. We will perform one of these methods which is phonetic command and non-command method and we will ask the patient to st stay still. Now we will measure the distance between these two points. After this we will ask the patient to occlude. Later the distance between these two points is again measured. So difference between these two values will give you the freeway space. The third procedure is indirect extraoral method. Here the interocclusal space is determined in a radiograph. Two lateral cephalograms will be taken, one at rest position and other in centric occlusion. This can help to establish the freeway space. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Do like this video and subscribe to Medinet for more. Thanks for watching.